Let's solve this TPE question. It is about a certain European city and we're only looking at it in a certain decade. There are two things talked about in the question. One is the mean monthly rents for studio apartments. Second is mean monthly rents called just, you know, those this time for one bedroom apartments. So this is your second quantity. I'm going to actually write down the information we have about them one by one. If I look at the first category, the studio apartments, they are saying that this mean monthly rent varied yearly. What that means is that for a certain year, this average monthly rent that was a constant then for another year this was a different constant and so on so you're finding the average monthly rent on a yearly basis now they're saying this varied from a low of 804 to a high of 1173 euros so i'm just going to write the low and the high values of what let's just be very clear we are talking about the mean monthly rent and we simply have our values here then they've actually given you the exact same thing for one one bedroom apartments also as you read further it tells you that even these vary and this time the low is 1060 the high is 1497 so let me put these perfect now let's read further now it says but some individual studio apartments rented for as little as 420 euros in some years. Is that a problem? It's not really a problem because this is the mean. If my mean is 804, that doesn't mean that all of the individual monthly rents have to be at least 804. That's not true. If you consider about this very mean, the 804, it could be from a year where some months had very low rents, this 420 talked about, and some months maybe had a 1200, 1300, so on. This is just a mean value actual monthly rent in that year could be different that's why it's important to understand that you are taking mean monthly rent but you're taking it for a year so this is the average for all 12 months this is not exactly the rent in those 12 months okay so exceptions are okay but i'll still list what they say some studio apartments went as low as 420 euros and then if i read further it's also telling me about some one bedroom apartments that rented for up to 2262. So in this place, they are giving me a high, which they're trying to show that, see, this is greater than even the mean that you had, but that is okay. This is the greatest possible average monthly rent, but this is from a specific month. Similarly, this 420 is from a specific month. This does not in any way contradict my first piece of information. It's two things that I have together. Now let's read further. To visually assess something, what to assess what? Ratio of mean monthly rents for studio apartments apartments to those of one bedroom varied. Basically, how did this ratio vary over the decade? You were seeing all of this for a certain decade. Now you want to see that this ratio, if I find of the actual mean monthly rents for these two types of places, then how is that ratio changing in this 10 year period? To do this, this is her goal. To do this, they've told you about something that Maria wants to do. She requires a graph. And what should the graph be like? The characteristics are here. It will have two axes of equal length, that's one thing, with mean rents for one bedroom apartments on the horizontal axis, mean rents for the studio apartment on the vertical axis, and the same scale on both the axes as well. The mean rent will simply be plotted as a point for every year. So essentially, if I'm looking at it, you know, in a 10 year period, then I am going to have 10 mean values for the studio apartments, 10 points therefore, and 10 points I'll have for the one bedroom apartments. Now, let's see. What can we understand about this graph? So I can visualize it this way. I know it's going to have two axes. I know the lengths are going to be equal. So just assume that this that I've drawn, these are equal in length. And if they also have the same scale, it means if I mark one unit here, one unit here, it's going to be equally thick here as well. If this is say, you know, 200 uh, euros, then this is also going to be 200 euros for one unit. It's going to be identical that way as well. Then they told me what the one bedroom is here on the X axis. The studio apartments are here on the Y axis and I'm going to just keep making points for all of these mean rents. Now, what do we really need to do? We'll have to read the question. Till now, we've understood the given information about the means. Then these are about some specific months. Let's put that. And then we also got an idea about what type of graph Maria wants. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as 
as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Now, let's see what the question is asking. From the following options, select for horizontal axis, this first column, select what? A range of points, a range for the points on the horizontal axis. Similarly, vertical axis, you will select a range for the points on the vertical axis that together would satisfy her requirements. So basically, they are just saying that on this graph that you were talking about, what is the range of all of the points that it has? So if I suppose only talk about horizontal axis, then 0 to 1500 euros on on this would mean that it starts from 0 euros and it goes till 1500 euros as the final point. That actually makes the length of this entire axis as 1500 euros for you. And because you know that the length has to be identical, it will be 1500 for this as well. That's one thing. Now, another thing, if suppose 400 to 1100 is the answer, that would mean this first point will denote 400 euros. This one here, the last one will denote 1100 euros, which means the length here would be 700 euros. In that case, even this y axis will be 700 in length. So this is just to show you how we are understanding all of these. Now think about it. Since your goal is to put on this graph only the mean rents, these values first of all are unnecessary for you. You don't care about what happens in a specific month. So these should not impact your choice of the range that you need on the x and the y axis. That's one very important point. Otherwise, you will feel that to include all of these, you might need to go wider than you actually need. Because if you see studio means are only between 804 and 1174, you don't really need to go as low as 420 to cover that entirely on the y axis. So this is important. This will not decide the range. So you want to decide the range only based on these mean values. And the information that you have, there are just two things that you have. The overall length of these should be equal, the axis, and the scale should be the same, which means one unit should mean the same thing. That does not mean they have to be exactly the same ranges. For example, I can have, say, 100 to 500. That's a length of 400. And I can very well also have 800 to 1200 on the y axis, which is also a length of 400. So it's just about having the same length and the same scale. So with that in mind, we will see which choices here work for us. But obviously, we need to keep in mind the ranges that we have, the low and the high of the mean. So I'll bring that here first. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course, and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the TPA quant modules in the two-part analysis course, we teach you how to get comfortable with this question type. You will gain the confidence to handle any question of this type in the most efficient manner. We serve more than 58 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you can learn various aspects of this question type, including the process skills of inference, translate, and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. And here we are. I've only brought the relevant stuff here. We have the three conditions that must be satisfied and we also have the mean values that are to be covered. So look at your conditions again. First, the ranges must have the same length, then the same scale, and then they must cover all of these mean values. To cover the mean values, essentially, if a range covers the lowest and the highest mean value, it automatically covers everything in between. So it'll just be about checking all four of these values for these ranges. Now think which condition here should I start working with? Because I'm trying to find the correct choices, right? The ones that satisfy everything. So I look at these conditions one by one. Either I can start with the length condition or the mean value condition because scale is still something that I cannot see here how much one unit will be until I come to a range. Now, if I choose the same length method, then I can simply write down the lengths of all of these and see where is it that I can have the same length between any two ranges. So if you write down the lengths of these, this first one is 1500. This is 700. I'm simply subtracting the smaller value from the bigger one. And I get the lengths here this way. Now, if you notice that among different choices here, the only pair where I can have the same length is this 400 and 400, which means if one of these uses the third choice and the other column has the fifth choice as the answer, this is one pair. 
but this is not it. Understand that you can very well have a single option as the answer for both of these columns, right? And in that case, obviously the range will have the same length, which means there is another possibility that I have the same choice for both my columns. Now, this actually already helps me eliminate all of the other combinations, which means it's not going to happen that I have this first choice with any other choice. Impossible. Cannot happen that I have the second choice with any other choice. Again, impossible. Now understand the power of this. There were actually a total of 25 possible combinations here. I could have taken any choice with any other choice, right? Out of those 25 possibilities, we have narrowed down our work to just six choices just by using this one condition of length. Because this was such a limiting condition, length has to be the same. It helped us narrow down a lot. Now when we have this, we just have to see which ones out of these six possibilities also satisfy the third condition. That is, you have to find the pair of choices that will cover all the mean values. So I can simply start checking for these possibilities. I'll start with the first one and because that has to be the same length case only. Remember, it's only third and fifth where you have different choices. I'll start with the first one. Let me see if this does cover both of these values or not, both of these low and high. If I see 804 and 1174, they are very well both in this range. So good. I see 1060, 1497, they are also in this range and I am done with the very first choice. This itself has to be the answer for horizontal and vertical. If I've obviously taken the exact same range for both of them, the length is maintained, the mean values are covered as we just checked, and the scale is also going to be the same. So we are good here. We are already done. Now, among all of these conditions, you were actually free to start with any particular condition. For example, you could have chosen to start with this third condition, whether it covers the mean values or not. But then in that case, you would have to evaluate every single choice here for both of these studio and one bedroom apartments to see which ones would be possible. Then you would go into the length to see, you know, which ones also have the same length. That would be a lot more possibilities than this one here. I encourage you to try that for yourself. Right now, we are done. Let's summarize this and I'll also highlight this part about which condition to start with. So here in this question, we started by understanding everything that was given to us really, really clearly. It was not very difficult to cleanly visualize this in the form of a table. We were careful to identify both types of data, monthly data, mean data, and this about the specific months. After that came Maria's requirement that we had to be careful about. And once we read the requirement, we knew that we don't need the specific months, so we did not take that forward. Here, we simply had our mean values and these conditions that had to be satisfied. Now, among the conditions, you should always choose the condition that has the most limiting impact on your choices first. This one, for example, the first condition helped me come down from 25 to 6 possibilities only, after which checking for the third condition was really, really fast. If instead you start with some other condition and then try to come here, you will see that you need a lot more work. So this is a learning you should take forward to every question with conditions. Start with the one that will help you narrow down things considerably, then take it forward from there. And everything begins, of course, with all owning the dataset complete.